Mm, g'day Tragic here and welcome back to the next turn in Mage Knight. This is the first of the day-night cycle. We just got to choose our cards. Now there was a big sort of screw up. <laughs> uh, oh wait, this isn't on the source for some reason. So there was a big sort of screw up with my turn, last turn. Basically, I accidentally did these things. So, so these cards, they have do one effect or choose another effect. And I was doing both effects. Uh, the real screw up was here. Uh, he had a card that produces influence and you can use that influence to heal yourself or you can use it as an interaction to buy something. I did both. So I bought a spell and I healed myself. That was a huge mistake. I did the similar kind of thing with the rejuvenate, but for different reasons. So rejuvenate, you can heal, you can draw, you can gain mana tokens, or or you can ready a level one or a level two unit. The problem with this is, this is an example of how badly written the cards are in Mage Knight. So the way English works with conjunctive words like or, is that they kind of separate the sentence into separate sections, like two sentences in a way, two principles basically. So you got heal one, draw a card, gain a green mana token, or ready a level one unit, or a two unit. So that first line is really saying, heal one, draw a card, gain a green mana token as one thing. And then, or you can do this. So you can do all that, or you can do this. But what you're supposed to read it is heal one, or draw a card, or gain a green mana, or ready a level, blah, blah, blah. So it's a separate list of things that are all separate. This is one of those cards that you just have to learn to read correctly, even though it's badly written. And because uh, it's been six months or whatever since the last time I played it, I just forgot that I, <laughs> I forgot that. So I actually healed two. I drew two cards. I gained a green mana crystal to end my inventory. And that's just wrong. So there was two really big screw ups that really affected the card pools. So that's a big error, but I'm not going to bother fixing it. There was another thing someone said that I, I didn't uh, give uh, Wolfhawk an artifact, but I did roll the dice, I'm pretty sure, and it came up as a spell, so she should have a spell in her deck somewhere. But we're just going to move on, you know. Don't watch my, my, my playthroughs for rules. That's what I always say. I just like to have fun. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to pick our stuff. So Athena goes first. She's just going to take Mana Search, which I think is the most powerful of the... Unless you've got a real reason not to take it. Mana Search is the one you take. Now, Mana Search is a really interesting card because it's different depending on how you play. See, most people play this game as cooperative or solo cooperative. I play mainly competitive. That's how I mainly play this game with my mate. We play two-player uh, two competitive, running two made knights who are teamed. So we, we play with co-op and competitive cards and skills. But the point is, when you play competitive, you're kind of racing each other, right? But when you're playing cooperative, you're slow the game right down. So you're trying to time it so you run out of cards at the same time. So, you know, you organize it. So oh, I'll do this and I won't take that die because you'll need it for attacking this thing. And so you, you're working together. But in, co in competitive, it's a much more aggressive, quick race kind of game. So mana search in co-op is you basically want to run it every single turn. For example, in this one, we have three reds, that's too many. So you would always do, I would just instantly roll the yellow and the red to try and give more options to my partners. But mana search when you are playing competitive, you don't want to ever use it unless you have to. The only time I would be using mana search is if I don't have a source die or if I want to save a crystal. But it just means you use it a lot less. But even so, it's still very, very good even in uh, competitive play. So now we have the Dwarf Man. Okay, so the Dwarf Man's in a bad set. We had a really bad start, actually, if you think about it. Lots of forests, so there are three movements. And then a heap of five. Like, basically, all this right down here, you know, it was all five. Five, 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 five. So... These people really went a bad direction. The problem is now, especially for the dwarf, is that forests are five. So that's five, ten. That's five, six, seven to get to there. And there's also this 
gibbering ghoul in the way who has vampiric. Now, the way vampiric works is that you gain every wound you gain, he gains armor. So he's got four attack, four damage or whatever. So if that's unblocked, he will be getting two wounds on the dwarf, which will make this six armor. So it's actually more difficult to fight than you might think because you have to produce the block and the attack. The problem is he's got very little options here. He's got, uh, he does have a crystal generator. He has wing, uh, wings of wind. This allows you to move through spaces at only one point, but you need a white mana. There is no might, white mana up here. We do not have a concentration in hand. So there's basically two ways around this. One, we try and get a late card. So Wolfhawk goes first, and then she has to deal with this vampire by moving to here, unless she explores and moves this way, which is an option, I guess, but because it's Dungeon Lord, she'll want to get this dungeon, right? So we go after her and hope that uh, white mana is produced into the thing, but there's actually two blues. So I think the best bet is for him to go first and then use Crystallize to create a white mana. You know what I mean? And then we can save the white mana to our inventory and then we're guaranteed to be able to use this move when we want to. And then we can move all the way to here. Wolfhawk will probably be here so we won't uh, we won't be able to move there or maybe even into here in one turn, like really get the hell out of dodge. So he wants an early one. So we're gonna take Long Night. So Long Night basically is the same as the day one. You can just shuffle your cards, get some cards back. But the only person who can go before him now to take, even, you know, unless they take two blue dice, he'll always be able to crystallize. And they'll also need to take from the dusk, which means, you know, there's no power. So no one wants to take that if they can help it. Finally, Wolfhawk. Uh, Wolfhawk. Wolfhawk. Hmm. I think Wolfhawk is going to take preparation. And then we're going to... Do a search and grab the blocker. Okay, Get that shuffle. So preparation just allows you to take any card out of the out of the deck. I'm going to take preparation because that five block there is two blue mana. We take that five block and we'll be able to deal with this guy very easily. And finally, good old Norwells or whatever his name is, Norwas Noro. Noro was, <laughs> let's call him Noro, the elf. He uh, he doesn't have much choice. I'm just going to take Midnight Meditation. So Midnight Meditation allows you just to discard cards from your hand, which is something that I need because, I, like I say, I play competitive most of the time, so I'm used to playing more in more of a rush. And what that means is because I'm in more of a rush, I, I do more aggressive play, take more wounds. So I, I quite like anything that can clear wounds out of my hand. Okay, let's forgot to turn off all the UI stuff so it's a bit cleaner to look at. We're ready to go. So it is the dwarf's turn. And before he while he's doing his turn, because we've got this tactic which gives us plus four instead of one for a sideways card. And then we get plus one for every unit space that doesn't have a unit. It basically means we don't care about being evil. Wolfhawk, in my opinion, is an evil character. It doesn't matter if the reputation is low because we are going to be not buying any units. So I'm going to do a, vin pl uh, a village plunder. So let me just... That's her thing there. That should go back one as well as drawing two cards. Uh, yep, it went back one. So the way it works is you can plunder a village during other another player's turn. And if you do, draw two cards and get minus one reputation. So we just got an extra couple of cards. And we've got some move cards. That's very handy. Okay, so that's actually a pretty good hand. We've actually got a very good hand. Right, so back to the dwarf's go. So the dwarf is gonna do what we talked about. He's gonna take a blue crystal, crystallize it into a white mana, and that's gonna ensure 
that the wings work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to discard both of these things, both these influences, because I don't really want them. Because we do have a long night, so we can get cards back in our hand. So that's basically what I'm going to do for this move. So let's end that turn and redraw. Much better. Okay, it is now the witch's turn. So she needs to go three, four, five, get onto here. We're pretty sure we can do that. We'll just go. I'm going to take the green. I like taking greens because greens are very, very powerful, and that will screw over this guy here. I shouldn't, that's, that's a hidden information. I tell you what, I'll put up both and I'll just shuffle them. One, ooh, oh God, stupid mod won't let me do it. <laughs> okay, which one will we use? Blue, okay. So we take the blue dice, we move four, and then we do one more for five. And we've gone three, four, five. Now, we can produce four, five, six. No block. Well, yeah, so I'm just going to go and turn there. Bam. Rewards claimed. And now it's the, the, <laughs> the witch guy's turn. So we have a green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go bam. I'm going to use this green and I'm going to throw away our action card and throw away this attack five block. I had a look at this before I started the playthrough. So this card here is a fantastic blocker. It's four blocks straight off the back. And then you can actually throw away non-wound cards to increase it and throw away as in discard, right? And of course, it doesn't matter. It's still four block for no mana, and you have a possibility of ice block five and all the other things you can do if you throw something away. So it's basically uh, the exact same card as this, right? Except it's got four block instead of attack two block. And I think it is a, a general upgrade. So I'm gonna pay for that, chuck that out, take this one, and it goes straight into our hand. And we want to get three movement. So then we're going to go two movement. And of course we get plus one movement because we have a ready unit. So this gives us plus one movement for every ready unit. So that's actually three movement. So that is bam. That gives us a red mana crystal. One, two, three, four. And we get to draw one card. I think that's correct. Bam. Crystal ice, not bad. Okay, Wolf Hawk. So Wolf Hawk needs two to move into there and then attack. Now, what have we got here? So, what have we got here? Four, two to move, another move. Oh wait, no, I need to kill that guy. That's what I'm trying to do, I remember now. I've got to kill this guy because we're getting attacked. So we've moved over here, that means we've provoked him. Now I remember what the hell's going on. So we move for two and provoke this guy. We now have to block for four. We no longer have a blue mana die though. One, two, three, four. And then we attack for four. Okay, so we can't do this with the move as well. So instead of moving, we're just gonna provoke. So we're just provoking. So that's gonna give us, there's still no blues, is there? 
So we need to either hit for six or we need to, yeah, so that's block four, five. That's block five. And then we're going to use this to create a blue token. So that's five and move two. So we can do the move. I'll take the green. So we can do the move. So we move two. He moves into here. That provokes him. We then block. We've got a block four. So we use this concentration to gain a blue crystal, which we then pay for this. That's block five. So he is blocked. We now have to hit back for four. So we don't even need this card. So that's attack four. He's dead. And we're going to discard this one just so we draw some extra cards. And that is that. Your bamo. And draw. Ooh, there's another draw. So we want a green crystal so we can heal two. Chill. Nice. Oakley dockley do. It's now round two. We're going to do two rounds this time. Let's get into it. It's his move now. We have a white crystal at least. So we are going to go wind. And this means that we can move one to five spaces. We have to create the movement though. And it's one point per space. And it doesn't provoke people. So basically we want to go one, two at least. So We've only got red stuff here. I'm just going to go two move. That's all I'm going to do. So instead of going five ten, that's going to cost us two movement. I'm going to chuck this out as well. Oh, we'll maybe do four. We'll just do that and we'll do four movement and we'll explore. Bam. Okay, nice. Is it just me or am I only getting Tesla monsters here. Well, there's enough of them in there. There's 32 in there. Maybe it didn't shuffle them. They're all the, the whole top of Teslas. I feel like every single card is a Tesla. Every single green token has been a Tesla monster. Okay, whatever. So we're doing that and we're drawing. Remember, we, we can be a bit free with our discarding because we've got Long Night. Bamo and Bamo. Heal. Another move, excellent. So, we kill two orcs or we move into another one. This doesn't flip up, of course, because we are, oh, look at this. So basically we have to go bam, bam, bam to get out of here. God, he's in such a bad position for movement. Okay, it's Athena's turn. She is on a, uh, Dungeon, so let's take the dungeon tile. Oh, look at this. Wow. So this guy's got swift. That's what that little arrow on the left uh, right is. So you have to block 14, which is impossible. So we have to take a heap of wounds here. It means we have to take two, four, six, eight, four wounds. We have a tranquility. We have a, so we can heal two that way and we can heal two that way. So we're fine. That's why I call her the blood witch. She just takes wounds and throws them away. So we need to produce five attack. We need the green for the heal. We need a red, which we can produce with concentration and then we will just have to tap this sucker okay so that's all done so firstly we take four damage one two three four we then attack back for four attack plus one sideways is five and we generated the red mana using concentration that hits him for five. He is now dead. We then heal for two. 
And then we do another two heal using this. So we heal one, and this one goes to the person who's closest to us, which is poor old elf man, Iblamo. Not a bad move. And we still haven't used a mana search. And that's that, Iblamo. Okay, so we gain a reward. We have to roll this dice. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna, what am I gonna do? Yeah, I'll do this. So I'm just gonna grab a die roller. So I'm just gonna grab that. I'm just gonna stick it over here. And we also need a dice. Let's make those dice size one so they roll a bit better. Let's link these together into a create state. So we are rolling for artifacts. Bammo. Oh, and we get an artifact. Finally, we get an artifact. So, rewards, Blanc. What have we got here? Okay, we don't want the banner because we basically, units we don't care about in this particular one because it's Dungeon Lords. Time of spells it is. Claim. Yoink. Nice. Uh, I think that's it. Okay, so let's uh, confirm. We didn't level up though, unfortunately. Rewards claimed. Now it's Norway's turn. There is still no green. Which is a, oh wait, we've got a green crystal. So we just go boom, rejuvenate, heal two. So get rid of those guys. That's that, end of that turn. Again, another red crystal, because we're still on the location there. Bam, oh, finally, still no whites. Wow, they, we were really having an issue with mana. Finally, it's Wolfhawk's turn. Wolfhawk also has no green crystals. And can't move because there's a, a water there. So this is a bad situation. Basically, I need two to move out. So let's do an explore for two. It's all red up here, so there's no there's nothing we can do. Really being held hostage at the moment. You know, I'm going to wait one more turn if, before I do Tranquility just to see if I can heal both of these. So let's end that turn. And now it's the Dwarf's turn again. So we're back. That's the end of two rounds. So as always, the Blood Witch is crushing it. Next turn she'll take this keep, I guess and then explore here. Meanwhile, these people have hardly moved. Wait, why didn't I attack? Oh, that's right, because I had no cards. Lethal chill. We need a blue mana. We really need some mana gen. All those spells that we got in the last round because we didn't get any artifacts. Ugh, it's terrible. Okie dokie, well that is the end of that. And I will see you guys.